Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I have really exciting news that I wanted to share with you guys and talk you through some important events happening for me in the beginning of next month. I'm not sure that I've already told you guys here on YouTube. I know that I have done so on Instagram. By the by, I will leave the link in the description for those of you who want to see more of my photographic work, as well as more of the things that inspire the art that I share with you here on this channel. Please consider giving me a follow back on Instagram as well. You will definitely get uh, different content here and on Instagram, just say. I was about to say that I've already shared that on Instagram, but I don't think that I've already mentioned it here. But I am participating at an art festival in early July. Actually, it is the Scottish festival that is taking place on 1st and 2nd of July in the south of France at Le Château de saint andiol It is nearby Avignon and it's going to be fabulous. So to all of my French followers or viewers here on YouTube, um, or those of you that may be uh, around in southern France at that particular moment, please consider joining me there on the 1st and 2nd of July. Actually, funny story, because earlier this year I was applying to be a participant and to have a stand on another art fair around the Scottish theme at Aubigny-sur-Ner, which is actually closer to where I live. And I've already been there last year myself, not as a participant, but just as a visitor and I liked it very much. It was really well organized, quite widely known in France, uh, so I was eager to get into this one. But funnily enough, the people who organized the thing um, didn't think it would be very practical with the paintings um, to be exhibited outside because obviously all those festivals are an outside event. Um, and I must say, I didn't quite get the point why this wouldn't be the thing to do. But anyway, I blew past it and I think that is so important, by the way, um, in this business, in this economy, uh, to be able to go past those things and not let them bring you to question yourself too much, maybe, because you are going to deal with quite a lot of rejections that you don't really understand and strange feedback or the lack of thereof. Um, so you have to, you know, be a bit thick skinned about it and not let it get to you that much. And I think this is an important quality to have at any industry, by the way. It's just a reminder that we are all facing some struggles at some level so don't please don't let it get to you and please don't let it get under your skin and make you question what you do and what you're capable of so please keep it in mind and do as i do just keep on going and you'll see there are good things waiting for you so i was rejected for the for the initial festival that i was applying to and i was talking to a photographer friend of mine who i actually met at aubigny uh, last year. That is how we got to know each other. By the way, I will link his website down below as well because he does stunning work. And uh, so I told him about this rejection and he was like, I can't wrap my head around it. I don't see why they would say so. But um, anyway, uh, I was talking to um, some people who are organizing another festival about Scotland later this year and I've told them about you so you know here's their number please call them and see for yourself if it isn't something that you might look into it and I was like oh okay that is such great news I will definitely check out the thing and this festival is called Festival Écossais 1782 or in English Scottish Festival 1782 because it was an important year in Scottish history and um, it is set up by a couple um, that are volunteering actually and who are that in love with Scotland that they literally set up a festival um, gathering different kind of businesses and people who share their love for Scotland and um, it actually blew my mind because they have told me that on the first edition of this festival, 
they were so overrun with visitors that um, they actually had to figure out how they would supply for all those oncomers and get additional beverage and food and stuff like that because they were literally overrun and they were quite surprised at how well it resonated with the general public and how many people checked in. So it was a huge success and this is why they booked a better location for this year. It's at a castle in southern France and yeah now they anticipated much more visitors than than last time. I think it was I think they mentioned like 120,000 people in two days. Don't quote me on that but I think that was the number that they gave me when we talked on the phone. Long story short they looked at my website and they were like whoa we were struggling to find artisans and businesses who were that much on topic because the Scottish community is obviously a bit more niche maybe so they were like oh my god we were so struggling to find artisans that are more on the Scottish side of the topic and not generally just just Celtics so they were actually really excited to have me participate in the festival and I felt very welcome and so happy to be part of this event and actually I was a little annoyed at myself for not having heard of it before. I mean I don't quite know how that happened because with my Scotland obsession this was an event that you would think would be hard to miss in a way but anyway there you go. I'm on it. Um, 1st and 2nd of July, remember? And this is what started the video because of course participating in an outdoor event like an art fair or a festival of this sort requires quite a lot of preparation and anticipation and planning and things like that. So I wanted to share how I personally will prepare for this art fair and what my process is going to be here and maybe and hopefully it will be useful for those of you who are maybe thinking about participating in an art fair and um, yeah I hope I will be able to shed some light on what to keep in mind and um, what to avoid and how to save you some trouble and some thinking time here. Right, so first thing that you have to figure out when you're participating in this kind of art fair is of course the selection of your different pieces. In my case, as I'm doing different media, uh, that is oil paintings on the one hand and lino prints on the other hand. So my first task here was to figure out the balance between those two kinds of items. The couple that is organizing the Scottish festival of course assured me that there would be no problem at all to exhibit the oil paintings, that there will be enough room for it and also the possibility of you know hanging it within the stand. So this would not be an issue. At the same time my thinking was as it is outside and as some of those pieces are quite substantial because they are like 80 by 60 centimeters big I think it would still be an issue of mobility and transportability in here because it is not only or not primarily an art fair per se it is a festival in a larger sense of the word so there are different activities that are organized there uh, there is a reenactment of Highland Games uh, what else there is hunt fasting uh, Scottish dances um, axe throwing archery this kind of stuff as well going on uh, at the festival at the same time so the visitors which means that the visitors will walk through the area and through the castle and explore the different stands of course but also partake in the different activities and I think 
it might be not very helpful or not very fitting having them transport a ginormous oil painting um, by the frame. I think that at some point this is not going to be very comfortable and of course they can pay leave it with me for the time that they are walking through the festival and then come and collect it um, at the end of the festival but I kind of think that they're not going to be in this particular mindset maybe. I think this is not what the majority of people will maybe be looking for. Also the, there is also, there is my concern about the pricing because once again, um, I'm not sure that people are going to look for spending half a thousand euros or even over a thousand euros on a painting to bring back home as a souvenir or of some sort because it is not a luxurious holiday, it's not a particular event in their lives when I think this kind of thinking might be actually very interesting. For instance, when you are going to Scotland and it is maybe your honeymoon or it is a trip that was very important for you for some reasons and you might be looking for something to remember this by and thus be in the mood of investing um, a more substantial amount of money into one luxurious personalized item like um, a painting of the place that you visited. This I can imagine very well. This is what I encourage people to do by the way. Um, this is what I do as well. Personally when I'm in love with a trip and I have the budget for it I will definitely be at this particular time more in the mood of investing to something more substantial that will mean as much to me as the trip meant to me in a way. I hope you know what I'm trying to say here. Uh, the festival is maybe not that important or remarkable of an event to have this optics. This is why I have concluded that I will bring maybe two or maximum three pieces with me and have them installed um, maybe on an exhibition easel at the, at the entrance to, to the stand so that I can showcase um, what is maybe the core of my activity so that people can still see okay there are those prints uh, but she is doing also different kinds of um, techniques and uh, this is what it looks like and I always thought that well oil paintings really don't look that best on a photo or in a video this is something that you have to see in real life, I'm tempted to say, because the texture, the colors, it's, it's not that it is inaccurate with the modern cameras that we have and things like that. You don't have the feeling, the look and feel of it correctly in a video or um, on a photograph. So. It always looks better in real life, so I think this alone is a good enough reason for me to bring some of the pieces with me in order to showcase, well, the craft and the different pieces. Additionally to those more substantial pieces that I will bring along, what I thought of doing was painting three little canvases, especially for the occasion, in a smaller format that at the same time will respond to the criteria of pricing better and mobility as well because they will be obviously easier to transport when they are 20 by 20 centimeters and they will take less time for me to make so I can reduce the cost considerably as well and I can personalize the subject of the painting enough in order for it to be really tailor-made maybe for this event. There you go. So I have three of those already blocked in with color. Um, actually I was wrong. It's not 20 by 20, it's 30 by 30. I think this is a nice format for something like that. I have three of them and what I thought of doing was making three 
portraits of a sort, so two decorative, let's say, very stylized um, clan chiefs and a lady at standing stones, of course. How would I be able to resist the temptation of doing something like this, right? And this will definitely make for at least one other video. I'm not quite sure yet if I would share the creating process of each one separately or if I will just mix and match uh, the creational process of the three and make a video out of that. I'm, I've not yet decided, but you'll see it's, um, I think it's going to be really fun to make and thus I hope fun to watch. The other thing I was debating was doing some reproduction prints of my oil paintings which would allow me to well showcase the different oil paintings but at the same time keep the pricing low and help the transportability. For those who followed me for more than a year and were there at the time when I launched my website for the first time, you might be aware that um, prints were actually an option that was available on my website initially because I'm and I've always been an advocate for the accessibility of art uh, in any way. I think art is such an important part of all our lives that everyone should have the possibility to have an access to art and to bring art into their homes. So when I designed the website and I, when I was thinking about the way that I wanted things to work, I always had three categories in mind of things that I wanted to do. Um, well, the original artwork, the commission pieces, that are at a premium cost and of course the reproduction work that would allow people who don't necessarily have the budget for a more substantial piece still to be able to enjoy it and to have it in their room in a, in a different way and that is why I added the option of ordering each piece in a A4 or an A3 print. It was not an easy decision for me because it implied investing in a very professional printer, of course, investing in really high quality paper in order for the print to really be an art print, to be of great quality and to reflect the original piece in the best possible way. I still like my idea, but um, unfortunately, and I can't really figure out why, but the demand has never been really there for those prints. I've not had one single order of a print, not one, in a year, so now I've taken the option off the website. Maybe it was a bit confusing, I don't know what went wrong there. At any rate, I'm not doing that anymore. But I thought that now that I have the printer anyway, now that I have the paper anyway, I might as well reprint those reproductions and bring them to the art fair. After some consideration, I decided against that. And I'm not saying that this is maybe how you should do it if you're in a similar situation and you're debating on doing it or not doing it. My bottom line was maybe people who are going to this kind of event want something that is more of one of a kind or something more of a craft. Maybe it's something really personal and I'm completely miscalculating this. I will tell you once I'm back from, from the Scottish festival and I will share the feedback that I got, of course. I imagine that you've already guessed it, but I'll say the obvious. Now with these decisions already made, um, it's clear that the body of the work that I'm going to bring with me to the Scottish Festival will be lino prints. Not exclusively, but the large majority will be lino print. And there is the transition to the second part um, of decision making, maybe that this kind of things involve, and that is the selection of the designs. 
All right, now that I have established what media I'm going to take with me to the art fair, we have to move on to the more crucial decision maybe that is the choice of design. What probably will really sell at the event itself is going to be the liner prints. So we have to be careful here and have a curation that is on topic and is going to perform well, let's say. In my case, as you might be already aware, I do two types of liner prints, which are the multicolored ones and the monochrome ones. The multicolor liner prints I don't have a ton of. They are very limited editions, so I will definitely be looking forward to bringing them with me. There are a couple of designs that I still have in stock. So we have, for instance, this one here. I don't know if it will fit into the frame, but let's try this out. Okay. I... Right, now you should be able to see it. So this one is called the Paradise Beach and is a representation of Achmelovich Beach in Scotland that I visited last year. It is a very cheerful and colorful liner print. I like it a lot. So I will definitely grab the five editions I think that I still have of this. Okay, the next one is a bit difficult and I struggled with the decision here, but Ultimately, I think that this is not the best design that I ever came up with. So the mountains are not coming with me to the art fair. Also, it was a very limited edition of only three prints. I had some issues with the proportion of the extender that I, that I mixed in with the ink. There were quite a few editions that didn't work out very well. So at the end, I only have three of them that I would be ready to sell and well, not bringing the three prints with me, I think is not going to be an enormous loss. So in the end, I think I would rather have the space and the attention for better designs than this one in particular. There is, of course, this one that is still drying. I did a short, I think, on this one, how I printed um, this little print of a cottage that I like very much, I must say. I think it really is the best design that I have done so far. There are so many details in the grasses that I'm really happy with. It has many, many, many different quite translucent layers of ink on it so i think this will do very well i like it very much so this is a no-brainer for me and while we're on the subject of multicolor prints i have another design in stock that is already drawn out but that i have not yet carved and i'm thinking about maybe making a video about this one of doing a multi-layer multicolor print with me from the beginning until the end so you will get to see the whole process of me doing it. So stay tuned for this one. I will maybe have it out by next week, maybe in two weeks. I'm not quite sure yet in which order I will work on the different pieces and which I will finish first. So I'm not sure yet, but it is coming. So we will have three multi-layer, multi-color liner prints in total that are all representing different places in Scotland, so I think this will fit nicely with the theme of the festival. And you will have guessed by now, the rest will be monochrome ones. There are two smaller ones that I've done in the beginning of last year and that are still available for purchase. Two smaller designs of standing stones that I think will be really fitting as well. So we have one stone on my left and on your right that was inspired by the Inverness standing stones, but I've well exaggerated the design a little bit in the way that we only have the one stone and I've brought the trees that are surrounding the space a little more to the foreground so that it looks more like it would be immersed in a forest. I thought that would reinforce its mythical vibe a little bit more. 
So this guy is coming with me, definitely. And this one is obviously heavily inspired uh, by the Kalanish Standing Stones and is maybe more decorative because I've chosen to place the sun right behind it so that you have the whole mystical vibe. So I think this will work nicely with the theme of the festival as well. Then I have another print that I've done two years ago now, I think. Um, this one is a representation of Edinburgh and is really one of my absolute favorite spots in the city. It is also the first thing I ever saw of Edinburgh. Maybe this is why it's so special for me, because this is what you got to see when you arrive at Waverley. And um, yeah, for me it is just such an iconic site that I absolutely would want to include this in my selection for the festival. Also, I think as it is very heavy on the Scottish theme, I think there will be a lot of people who have been to Scotland and who might appreciate Edinburgh as much as I do and would like to have something of their favorite city to take back home. Now, I still have one month to prepare so what you could consider if you were to be in a similar position as I am and preparing for an art fair, you might think about how you can extend the body of your work in order to make it more in sync with the event that you are exhibiting it at. In my case, it is not an immense issue maybe in so far that all of my work is already centered around Scotland, so I don't absolutely have to adapt the body of my work in order to um, be perfectly on topic with the event. But if that is not your case, you might think about how you can add smaller pieces to your existing work in order to really work well with the theme of the event if there is one and without doing huge changes to what uh, your current stock is but adding one or two pieces if you are able to and if you have the time. I still have one month in order to prepare all of this so I thought it might be fun to add some smaller works um, just for the fun of it actually and in order to be smart about it I looked at what I still had in stock because it was out of the question for me to purchase new materials just in order to extend the, the, the existing designs because I'm already happy with them. In my case I still had five lino blocks that I haven't yet used. So I have different options here. The two A4 sized ones I thought would make for a great addition to the Edinburgh design because they are the exact same size and I would be able to do two different iconic views of Edinburgh and in that way it would be a triptych. So basically a design that is split into three different pieces but that work as a whole. One would not absolutely have to purchase the three, but I think that for those of you who would want to have a design that fills the room a bit more, this would be a great way to have something that fills your wall nicely, but if need be, could be broken up into the three individual pieces and hung independently and individually from one another. And it so happens that I already have two iconic views of Edinburgh in mind that I will definitely try to finish for the art fair and I think that I'm going to do a video about that. Um, not maybe one video for one individual design but I will keep you posted on that one. Next I still have one of those A3 designs, oh, A3 forms that are the exact same size as the multicolored lino prints that I've um, shown you already. 
I will not have time to do a second uh, multi-layer, multi-color design for the 1st and 2nd of July because we have to keep in mind here that everything has to be printed and still have time to dry um, before I mount everything and take it with me. So this would not be reasonable um, and quite frankly not feasible I'd say. So no. But what I still can do would be a monochromatic design like the Edinburgh print for instance but I will not go down the architectural route again. I think what I would really like to do with this one would be the illustration of a Scottish folktale. I feel that it would go really well with the theme of the festival uh, because of course there there will be a lot of Outlander fans there and I would want to tap into uh, the shared passion for the Scottish folklore and everything a bit um, supernatural. So I was playing with the idea of doing an illustration of a Selkie folktale maybe. I'm not yet sure. Again, I will keep you posted. Uh, with any videos for the process if I come up with something that I really like. And finally, I have two A5 format lino blocks here and I thought that this might be a really good option for a quick souvenir of the event. So people would want to have something a bit iconic maybe, really typically Scottish and therefore I play with the idea of doing a small thistle design and maybe a tiny landscape with a cottage, maybe a highland cow because my god we love those animals, right? Um, something like that, something really really typical um, really graphic in this 19th or 20th century folktale book um, engraving, something like that. Now that we've established what designs we're going to go for, um, I would like to talk about how many prints of each design I will going to take with me to the art fair. And I'm not going to lie to you, this will heavily depend on the state of my paper stock at hand because as already mentioned um, I'm trying to make something work on a budget here so I'm not at all in the optics of repurchasing lino blocks or repurchasing paper in any way because I already will have to have some additional expenses for the packaging. I'm going to get into that uh, just afterwards so bear with me. And therefore I will have to make do with what I have in hand in terms of paper. Okay, so these are the paper that... no. Okay, this is all of my paper stock. All of it is Japanese awagami paper that is really lightweight and thus perfect to be hand printed. But on your left side, so here we have a Kitakata Select. It is a bit thicker and has a yellowish hue to it. While on the right side here we have the Okawara Select that definitely is more lightweight and while it is still not completely white, albeit appearing so on the screen but I promise you in real life it isn't. It is more of an ivory tone I would say uh, that I have already pre-cut in different sizes that I used for my different previous prints. So I have nine of the Awagami paper which would enable me to either go for nine prints of a a3 design which I would rather not do because I would like to keep them coherent and all multicolor prints being printed on the same type of well off-white slash ivory colored paper 
this really makes the color pop more so I think I'm gonna stick with that and rather use the Awagami paper for monochrome prints. Thus this would bring me either to 18 A4 prints or 36 A5 prints. Now I would have to think about how I would want to distribute the designs. So in the A4 forms I would have the three Edinburgh designs which I would obviously want to print on the same paper so I feel like 18 might maybe not be the best number because it only leaves me with six prints for each of the Edinburgh designs. I feel that is maybe less than I would want to do and therefore I would rather reserve this kind of paper for the smaller designs and here I would have to consider that I have already previously pre-cut the Awagami paper in eight um, A5 sized sheets so I'm already stuck with them and I might as well use them but not for instance for this for the standing stones because it is a set and I might want to do more than just four prints of each and I only have eight and I would not want them to have different colors so you see where I'm going with this uh, this is how you might want to make your decisions and combining the different designs the different materials that you have and see what combination might best suit your purpose without causing any further costs all right folks we have still two topics to cover real quickly the first one being the presentation of your products as well as signage and the second one being packaging and they both have to work together obviously let's start with the presentation of your products so in my case as we have already established there will be the oil paintings and the lino prints present at my stand for the oil paintings what i thought um, was the best way of showcasting them would be having exhibition easels one or two because then i can bring them up to the entrance of the stand and i think that this will be the best place for people to see them in the right light and for them not being at the back of the stand the smaller ones i will be able to put on some kind of uh, desktop easels that don't take much place up um, that are really cheap and cheerful. I think I will not bother more than um, checking Amazon real quickly and ordering them. Now the trickier part will be the lino prints. Because there are so many of them I will not be able to hang them all even if I would have the possibility of a rail running alongside the wall of the of the stand which I'm not sure by the way that I'm going to have. I would not want to stack them one on top of each other because this will stop people from seeing them and going through them they would have to lift each print up individually I think that is probably the worst idea one could have and this is why I think the best option would be to stack them vertically in a kind of a box so you would have one box containing all the additions of one particular design that way I can line them up uh, on the table at the front of the stand and this would make do. Now the problem is if you want to do that you would have to find a way how to make the prints robust and being able to stand up, which paper won't do, obviously. So what I thought would be a good solution for this problem would be obviously, first of all, matting them. But this solution in itself will not suffice because you will have to make sure that the print stays nicely put in the matting because for various reasons I'm not going to frame them. The first one being the pricing, selling them unframed 
obviously helps to keep the price down. Second reason being leaving this choice of framing to the client gives him an opportunity to better integrate each art piece into his own interior. So this is why I won't frame any of the, of the lino prints. Therefore you would have to find another way of making the lino print um, stand upwards. I would therefore suggest that you think about matting the prints but in our particular case this alone won't suffice because remember this is an outdoor event in July so there will be a lot of heat and a lot of dust and the risk is that uh, the tape you're using to attach your liner print to the back of the matting will loosen up with the heat you would risk the liner print sliding off of the matting so you would want to secure them from the back this is why i want to opt for a cardboard to go to the back of the print and finally in order to protect the prints from any dust around i will insert the hole in a sort of a transparent envelope that I would be able to close up at the back where the branded sticker and then you have solved the problem both of the presentation and the packaging of each individual piece. Now you would need to think about different other pieces that you would need uh, to complete the whole setup. For instance, I always provide an authenticity certificate with each original artwork, be it a liner print or be it an oil painting. So now I will have to print all the authenticity certificates in advance for all of the prints of the edition that I am bringing with me to the festival. I was playing with the idea of maybe also ordering a portfolio so that it would facilitate the discovery of the gallery. In that way I don't have to tell people uh, to go to the website in order to see other available artwork for sale. They could just skim through this portfolio that I would have nicely put into view uh, on the table of the stand. I think this is maybe one thing less for them to do in order to, uh, to discover my work and I think this is maybe something you should consider doing as well. Think about ways that would make less work for people to find out what you do and to actually see your products. So it can be a portfolio, it can also be maybe a small roll-up with a QR code that leads them directly to your website. One definitely should have one or the other if you are not bringing along uh, the whole of your stock. Lastly, what you could consider is maybe something that simplifies transportation. So let's stay on the example of this Scottish festival for a moment. The visitors would not only go from stand to stand, but they would also partake in different types of activities. It's not an art fair per se. So I really have to think how I can make it easier for them to carry them around while they are itinerating through the whole area. So I think that it would be maybe a bit difficult to just hand the plastic envelope to them and then send them off. I think it would really be a good gesture to offer them a personalized paper bag at least. And this is especially true for the A3 format prints that are really well quite substantial in size and you have to pay attention to the fact that when you're matting a print it goes up in size. Now let me show you some of the websites that I'm using in order to get everything I just mentioned. Let's start with the authenticity certificates. For anything print related I'm using Vistaprint. Let's have a look at the authenticity certificate that I mentioned earlier on. Here I have an overview of the mock-up that I have created so far. You would have obviously the brand name as well as a short description on it, the title, size, paper and printing date, some instructions as to how best conserve the print being out of direct sunlight, then the date and the signature at the bottom and of course the logo at the back. Now these are the portfolios that I have 
that I've been talking about earlier on. Um, here's another mock-up that I've done with the logo at the front, a short description and contacts at the back, and obviously a selection of your best works in the middle. Now, as for roll-ups, you actually have three different options. They all come in different materials and sizes, so they are different options for you out there. Of course, you would have to budget accordingly. Now, Vistaprint does offer a paper bag, but unfortunately, size-wise, this won't do for me, especially for the larger A3 prints. This is going to be too small. Therefore, I found another website that I have already been using previously that is called Bizet. You have quite, quite a lot of uh, customization options. So, of course, the different sizes, I will have to go for the XL for the bigger print. Then the sizing of the logo, you can also choose from different types and colors of paper. Um, the color of the logo and the quantity. As for matting, the mats available at, at Amazon will do. Here I have one for the A4 sized lino print. Remember what I've told you earlier on, um, matting the print will bring up the size considerably. I have found another one on Amazon for the biggest print, so it will suit the A3 sized one. Now, I didn't find anything for the smaller A5 prints, but I do have this website. It's a French one and it's called Creapas. Creapas doesn't ship anywhere else apart from France and Monaco, but I'm sure there is another equivalent wherever you are uh, in the world. Um, the advantages of this website being a high degree of customization that is possible. So you have different colored matting and you can be quite precise with the height and width of the print as well as the size of the actual matting. So if you want the uh, one side of the, of the matting being not the same size as the other sides, you can totally do it. Let's say I want it to be 40 and 45. So the margin in the height would actually be lower than the margin in the width. It will show me exactly this. So you have a smaller margin here than you will have, have in here. Finally, for the plastic envelopes I was talking about, another French site, I'm sorry, um, that I will be using, which is called envelopes.com. Again, a large selection of sizes that you can choose from. I will find anything I need for my prints in here. So you will have the 45 by 32, 52 by 42. And the smaller ones, I still have to figure out the exact sizing of the matting that I would want to do. And I will be able to go accordingly for the plastic envelope. After looking at the pricing for the cardboard bags, I have decided against ordering them. And um, I think that cutting up some cardboards that I still have in stock will do the trick. And that's it for today, guys. I hope that you found it useful. I know now from my own experience how stressful it can be to prepare for an art fair or a festival where you're a participant. And I hope that some of my thoughts and suggestions might help you through this stressful phase of planning and organizing everything. If you don't want to risk missing any of my new videos, please, please consider subscribing. It would really help the channel a great deal. In any case, I will see you in my next video and wish you all a lovely day, evening or night, wherever you are watching this. Cheers.